Mark and uh, Chris, welcome. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Chris, but uh, thank you for uh, joining us. This is Chris's uh, invention, and he's the one uh, that's going to speak to you about the technology. So, uh, Chris, take it away. Okay, the intent here is to provide uh, some uh, knowledge around a manufacturing process that we use to chemically modify AN solution to produce an enhanced blasting grade ammonium nitrate. Uh, for the feed of uh, generating um, uh, uh, explosive products using this material. Now what I'm going to do is uh, show you a little video, I guess, get everybody's attention here. And uh, this is a 10 kilogram uh, package of Nexil. And there's the blasting mat. It has a tremendous heave, as you can see. Um, uh, why is Nexil fuel oil better than regular porous prilled uh, ANFO for blasting operations? Well, it's a, a very high density A in product. It is water resistance and uh, resistant, and it has uh, excellent storage properties. It uh, can uh, be made with a range of densities, but it, it uh, shoots at very high densities and thus you get uh, high detonation velocities. You can also uh, vary the energy properties by uh, changing the moisture contents. We do it differently. Instead of gassing, we uh, change the moisture contents. Also, the particle distribution is such that we achieve a close pack normal distribution which is typically less than 200 microns. We center it at about 60 microns. It's very cost effective because no clearing towers are involved. And you can make uh, 80 to 85% solution that can be used as the feed into the Nexil process. Um, you can deliver it to the hole with uh, uh, simple ANFO trucks. And um, also it can be pumped using pro progressive cavity pumps typically of the Moino type. Um, this gives you some idea of the, uh, the, the particles. The, these are less than 200 microns. And when you compare that to porous prills, you can see that they're much larger, minus eight plus 20 Tyler mesh. Why is the uh, Nexco technology considered to be disruptive? Well, we can offer a full range of uh, bulk and packaged explosive products. Um, you have a very low cost manufacturing plant capital and uh, the explosive itself is uh, very low cost. I think there's only four ingredients in it. Um, uh, you uh, can uh, again make a user energy, uh, a user controlled variable energy product. Uh, and you can do that for both small and large diameter blast holes. This is quite an opportunity for a mine site um, such that uh, it might find it worthwhile to manufacture its own explosive products. Uh, the reduced transportation cost just simply means that we can ship the 0.1% NSOL additive variety as an oxidizer. It's a green technology uh, simply because any waste that's produced can be recycled back into the input. Here's a couple of consistencies. This is a marshmallow consistency. This is a C4 type plastic uh, consistency, but we'll get into that later on. Uh, what is Nexo, Nexco technology for manufacturing blasting grade ammonium nitrate? Well, first of all, the process modifies AN solution using an additive. We call it our secret sauce, NSOL 1000. And this produces an enhanced blasting grade ammonium nitrate, which we call Nexil. And it can be used for both uh, bulk and packaged explosive products. The components of the process, simply a, pre a preparation tank, a nozzle, a flight tube, a cyclone here, um, a blower over here, and a wet filter here. Um, you can also add a, a ribbon blender or a, that has a rotary feeder uh, to, to block air going into the, uh, into the mixer and uh, a scrubber. 
So that is a, a very simple process um, and I'll get into it a bit more. This is the um, a, a picture of the 0.1% NSOL additive added to uh, AN solution. It, it, it appears to be dusty and soapy. And when you go up to 1% NSOL solution, it becomes like a wax, a very sticky and soapy. Now, uh, the Canadian Explosive Research uh, Laboratory requires a safety test to be done with any explosive that's manufactured in Canada. And here we have impact testing where we fire uh, 303 caliber bullets into samples uh, as well as uh, uh, 12 gauge shotgun shells into samples to see if they will detonate. Um, the next ill fuel oil at 0.1% um, uh, NSOL and uh, also 1% NSOL, uh, they pass uh, all these tests. Now, when we get to the DOT tests using a, a 15 grain uh, detonator, um, there's 100 grams in this uh, container, and this is a, a lead witness uh, cylinder. The whole idea here is when you detonate this sample, there's to be no uh, deformation uh, of the uh, of the lead lead cylinder. It turns out that um, uh, with 0.1% uh, uh, NSOL uh, in the um, in this test, we get no def uh, no de uh, detonation, and there's no depression on the uh, um, lead cylinder. But when you put one percent uh, NSOL in uh, in the in the next cell, uh, this will uh, react and produce um, uh, an, an obvious effect of of splattering out the uh, the lead cylinder. And when it's mixed with fuel. Uh, ready for uh, an explosive, um, you you will completely uh, dismember that cylinder. So uh, the the uh, point one percent additive can be shipped as an oxidizer, whereas the one percent can't. And these are just standard temperature pressure tests, and um, the, the the explosives uh, pass all of those. This is about one hundred and five psi, I believe. Now the um, government requires us to do uh, UN accelerated rate calorimetry tests. And when you do the AN solution just normal by itself, you get 230 uh, degrees C um, at which an onset will occur. Um, when you add 0.1% uh, NSOL into the AN solution, uh, that um, peak is uh, lower at uh, 210, uh, roughly 210 degrees C. And then when you um, go to uh, the manufacturing process, the government doesn't want us to go over 180 degrees C for the 0.1% NSOL additive. And it certainly doesn't want us to go over a, a 150 degrees C for the 1% NSOL additive. So those are our, our cutoff temperatures. You can see here that the um, stability testing for the 1% NSOL 1000, it brought that peak on the previous page uh, a little bit lower to 178. These are the velocity diameter curves uh, for some explosives. Uh, this is ANFO, the purple or blue one or what do you, whatever you want to call it. And the red is for 0.1% NSOL added uh, to um, uh, our, our, our Nexil fuel oil. And for the 1% additive uh, to our Nexil fuel oil, uh, we get this, this VOD trace. So we manufacture the, um, the Nexil fuel oil at a moisture content of 7%. And for every 1% uh, added water above that 7%, the detonation velocity drops by 500 meters per second. So this is where we get our energy um, variability 
Uh, also, the process, uh, we need to make it when uh, the humidity is less than 20%. So this means um, in, for large quantities of this product, you need a, a plenum chamber where the um, incoming air can be treated so that the humidity going into the flight tube is less than 20%. This is what um, the spectrum, uh, the distributions of uh, the next little part particles look like. Um, you can see here that we're pretty much on 60 microns, but um, pretty much the range is from less than uh, one micron all the way up to less than about uh, 200 microns. So this is three orders of magnitude that you have to close pack particles. Um, and of course, an ANFO uh, prills, uh, minus eight plus 20, doesn't give you much um, in the way of being able to get higher densities. So when you look at this product, uh, let's look at uh, what we've done, um, ready to go. All safety tests have been completed. Uh, the long storage uh, stability has been determined not only over seasons, but over years. It's uh, MSDS compliant. It's got patents in Canada, USA, and Australia for both uh, product and process. Um, you can make it booster sensitive, detonator sensitive, using the same process, the same plant. We've tested 5,000 kgs at a quarry and 45,000 kgs uh, at an underground mine. Uh, the production process itself uses low temperatures and uh, low uh, pressures for steam. We have our UN numbers. Uh, the uh, Nexil product has been CERL approved uh, for both um, uh, booster sensitive and detonator sensitive uh, products. We have our MSDS sheets completed and we have our technical bulletins completed. Now we use our own ring planning product called Aegis Break Analyzer to distribute the energy throughout a ring using the Nexil fuel oil. We are developing a fragmentation model to maintain design consistencies for the process of turning underground blasting operations into primary crushing operations. Now this is key. We've spent, um, I've, I've presented papers on the ability of using a blasting operation as a crushing operation. And of course that requires uh, specific accuracies, not only with the explosive load, but the drilling and also the detonator timing. So we also need to be able to throw back into the input the results of 3D laser scanning in order to provide feedback for the design process. For the ring blasting case, I believe everyone will uh, acknowledge the fact that the energy variability is extremely important along with accurate drilling and precision timing. So here is where you want lower energy at the collar, whoops. And, um, and of course at the toe, you wanna to maintain the energy. Um, these, this just represents the break radius around holes using the Nexil uh, product. Um, this is a, a section. Uh, this is a, a long section and this is the uh, top view. And this is of course the 3D view. Powder factor here was 0.44 kilograms per ton, 129 holes and nine, over 19,000 pounds of uh, kilograms of explosive. I'm gonna show you some interesting consistencies. This is what we call our bread dough consistency. This is in the, me in the, in the mixer and uh, it's been mixed with uh, fuel oil, uh, the binders, and of course um, the Nexil already contains the, uh, the secret sauce that we put in. And um, this is ready to go to a packaging machine or a bulk truck. Uh, here we have another consistency. This is our plastic consistency. Uh, just so happens that you can make this in a variety uh, of consistencies, anything you want. This is our rubber uh, consistency. And look at the strength on that. 
So you'll never get this explosive if you make the put it to, uh, or manufacture the right consistency. You'll never get it uh, um, bleeding into cracks and fissures. This is the um, under for an underground VRM operation. Um, this is where we use the marshmallow uh, consistency. Very easily handled by the by the miners, and and they love this stuff. Okay, in summary, the density can be varied from 0 0.7 to 1.4 grams per cc. And this is pretty much nozzle dependent. Um, you can, with the, with the right kind of nozzle, you can just about, may, just about make any particle distribution you want. The actual particle density of a particle is 1.71 grams per cc, which is pretty much the crystal density of, of ammonium nitrate. Uh, the ideal velocity is roughly around 6,500 meters per second, but you can get a range uh, 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 velocities depending on density and also uh, charge diameter. Uh, in a 100 millimeter diameter with 7% water unconfined, the velocity is about 5,800 meters per second. Got very high shock, very high gas expansion or, uh, or heave. Um, the energy can be varied from 640 to 880 calories per gram, plus you've got the ability of uh, changing the detonation velocity by adding the water content. Um, the water resistance is the same as water gels. Again, we have these multiple uh, consistencies. You can make it to whatever you want. Um, the storage is excellent if the container isn't broken. Even if you left um, a ton of Nexel, uh, the ammonium nitrate product out in the weather, uh, it could get wet and it'll completely dry out and uh, become a powder. And uh, then you can um, turn it back into ammonium nitrate solution. You're all set. Um, particle size ranges from roughly 0 0.8 microns all the way up to 250 microns. Three orders of magnitude for close packing. That's why we can get densities that are very high. Okay, um, now I'm going to get uh, into the meat of how you make this stuff. And this is the design and test of our patented flight tube process. Um, we did this in a subsonic wind tunnel with a variety of nozzles. And um, uh, we used laser beams to determine the droplet size, also the, uh, the, uh, the velocity of the droplets. Uh, what we're trying to do in the flight tube is make sure a certain amount of water comes off as the particles are traveling through it. Uh, so we did a lot of work on getting the flight tube uh, designed in, in very specific dimensions so that we could end up with uh, this kind of, of indication where uh, we can put 30 kilograms per second through the system, but we have to use 51, almost uh, 52,000 uh, cubic feet per minute going through there. Um, and the whole idea was trying to maintain the, uh, the 60 micron center. Um, so we found out that uh, water evaporation was pretty much uh, all, all uh, finished at the duct outlet. And uh, we did find that we had to tilt the uh, flight tube to take care of gravity, especially at uh, 40 kilograms per second airflow. Uh, flow. So, uh, air mass flow. Uh, so this presented uh, this prevented uh, uh, wall contact. So you didn't get any buildup at the end. Now this is a short vi uh, video of the process. This is the flight tube. You can see our test test powders going through there. This is the actual uh, uh, spray Nexil going through the flight tube. And we're spinning it out through uh, the cyclone, cy cyclones. And uh, we're collecting the, the material after it's been through the mixer. This is containing, I believe if I remember correctly, it's got 4.6% fuel oil, a couple of binders, and um, 
seven percent water. So so that's pretty much it. Now I mentioned that we can um, make this material out of uh, using the same plant. So what you do here is you make the 0.1%, 0.17% ensol uh, mixture, blow it and collect it. And if you use a mixer, you um, uh, are now making a booster sensitive product. Now you don't need to use a mixer. What you can do is you can use a, a mixer like a ribbon blender here. You can use a continuous mixer, which will deliver uh, the um, explosive directly to a bulk truck or you could also deliver uh, it directly to a hole by using a, an inline um, uh, mixer. Uh, and um, you would add the fuel oil, the, um, the binders that are already mixed in the fuel oil as the, as the material is being pumped in the hole. The same thing applies here. The only difference is, is that you're going to make the 0.17% ensol additive in this uh, tank here. You can blow it through and collect it in the mixer. And um, you can add, you don't want to add uh, enough uh, ensol additive in the mixer um, because then it'll become detonator sensitive. What you do is you wait until you get down, the, down towards the borehole. And on the truck is a little tank that has the fuel oil, the binders and the 1% ensol additive in it. And as it's being pumped down the hole, uh, it's being mixed going through a static mixer on the, on the hose into the, into the hole as explosive. But all made from one plant. Now this is a design of a large volume Nexil plant. Um, what we showed you in the little video was a quick and dirty, easy way to make the stuff. And um, uh, the interesting thing is uh, there's only a, a number, a small number of stainless steel components. You have the preparation tank, of course, the AN lines and the AN pump and the nozzle. Uh, also the rotary airlock, which is this thing here. And uh, the flight tube itself is made out of plastic along with the plenum chamber, which is right here. Um, and uh, the cyclone as well is made out of plastic. So you can literally see the material being made um, as it's being manufactured. Here we have a scrubber and, uh, and a blower to pull everything through the flight tube. So we're pulling everything through the flight tube. And of course, there's PLCs that control the speeds of the pump. Um, mixing and uh, the uh, air airlock, uh, rotary airlock feeder, uh, along with the um, Ensol 1000 drum. So everything here is automatic and controlled by PLC. Now handling. Again, this is what the material looks like. It's beautiful stuff. 11% water, 4.6% fuel oil, and two binders. It's, it's excellent stuff to work with. That that will go through an auger like no no problem, and it can be uh, fueled as well. This is fueled here, but if you just use the um, the uh, Nexil uh, product, um, you can fuel all that in a in a auger truck. Now this is what it looks like when there's 7% water, no binders and no fuel oil. 0.1, yeah, 7% water, okay. So this stuff is easily pumped. Okay, I'll turn this over to Mark and he can tell you some of the advantages of using energy variability. And um, more importantly to, um, actually turn the blasting operations into, into primary crushing operations so you can get rid of that um, expensive uh, crusher, primary crusher underground. Yeah, we did a study and looked at just how far we think we can get down the, uh, the crushing and grinding process and how much energy we can save. We think we can save somewhere between 25 to 50% of that energy required in uh, the milling uh, circuit. 
And, and, that, and there's 3% of the world's energy is consumed by crushing and grinding rocks into smaller rocks. So if you think about that, we estimate those savings in just electrical savings alone, but there's also carbon uh, savings in terms of carbon taxes to be somewhere between um, uh, 12.8 to $25.6 billion in just electrical savings alone, not taking out an underground crusher, not maintaining an underground crusher, all that's over and above this. So it's literally millions of dollars per mine in savings for doing the exact same thing you're doing now, just in a, in a smarter way. And, and so um, Chris, just go to the next slide. For the next slide, we also looked at the environmental impacts. So if we just took the mines that are in existence today and we just switched them over to this, this process of drilling and blasting, as I said, it's really not much different than doing today. Uh, we figure we could, the CO2 reductions just in energy alone, just in the energy alone used by the mines is equivalent to seven to 30% of all the carbon emitted in Canada on an annual basis, or about 10 to 20, equivalent to taking 10 to 20 million cars off the road. So you can see it has a huge impact in terms of a, a greenhouse uh, savings as well as plus there's a number of other uh, particulates and, and dust and, and um, uh, things like that that we also reduce in, in terms of overall. And so uh, really the next slide, Chris, so really what we're looking for is um, we're really looking for a partner to help us take this to the next level. We've got, we've got the fragmentation model that we're developing in our software. We've got the explosive product that we can use to vary energy. Um, and we have another technology coming on board as well that'll help us understand rock properties. So put all those three things together and we can turn uh, the blasting pro process into a repeatable manufacturing process. And that's where we're headed. So this is what we're looking for. And, and thank you for listening to our presentation today. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kristen.